Today's episode is going to be a project with the 5075E. However, the lessons that we have to show today are actually very applicable to the smaller tractors. I'm finding that sometimes it's easier to illustrate a lesson with the larger tractor, even though it applies more so to the smaller tractor. The project consists of using the grapple first and then the bucket to do some regrading and moving a ditch slightly uh, to try to improve the farm a little bit in our 40 acres in southeastern Illinois. But the lesson's much deeper than that. Stay tuned. So what we're doing here, Catrille, is we're building a levee. We're building a dam to keep from water going straight down. It's trying to make its own ditch. Okay. So next to the woods here, out to our left, way in front of the camera, is where we really want the water to go in the ditch. The water comes from up to our right here, down through, see? But it's been staying out in the field. So look right in front of the tractor in the field. See that ditch out there? Yeah. Well, we don't need two ditches. And so we don't want either ditch. We don't want any water to run right out in the field. We want it to run right over next to the woods. That makes sense. Where it won't do any damage. As it is, it's eroding our good farmland. I, I should be using the bucket now. Yeah. But I'm finding this actually works kind of okay in the dirt. And you don't have to switch back and forth, so. Yeah, and now I can't carry as big of a bucket load. It makes the back end really light. It's been a long time since I've discussed this, but I talked in some of our early episodes about how well balanced these subcompact tractors are. For example, the backhoe has just the right amount of strength. When you pull with that backhoe lever with the bucket down, the outriggers down, you just can't quite pull the tractor itself. The tractor is just heavy enough such that the backhoe can work at its full capacity. If the backhoe were any stronger, you would just drag the little tractor around. If it were any weaker, it wouldn't be powerful enough to do the job. The same is true for the front end loader. If it lifted any less, you'd be severely disappointed. If it lifted any more, you would have severe ballast issues on the back end. Same is true with the horsepower ratings. It's, it's amazing how well balanced these small tractors are. That's not necessarily true in some of the larger tractors. With this rig, you can almost tell by looking that this loader is huge on this tractor. I mean, it is incredibly beefy. This loader will pick up over 3,000 pounds to max height. That's a lot of weight for this size tractor. And in this episode, you're seeing some of that come to play. This loader is so powerful that you can easily put the tractor in a situation that it's not prepared to handle, especially if you don't pay attention to the documented ballast requirements. This is the field that the drainage work was done on, the tiling? Yes, it exactly was. I tell you what, while you're here, Catrille, we'll get some with the grapple. What I've been doing is kind of clearing out some of this stuff so you get dirt over here, right? Yeah. So I dive right in there with this thing. This thing is amazing. I don't know if I can get that tree totally out or not. Now you're going to see a scene here where the rear wheel comes off the ground. There's been a couple of times in prior episodes where with a grapple I have shown this exact scenario. And there's been several comments talking about, oh my goodness, you were going to turn over, you were going to turn over. Well, there are different types of scenarios where you might see a rear wheel off the ground. Some of them are incredibly dangerous and you truly are this close to turning over. Yeah, those are scary. We do our best to avoid those. So let's go into detail about those two scenarios. What you're going to see here is the grapple digging down into the dirt and me prying upward on a tree. So I'm putting upward pry on the object I'm working on, that tree stump as I pull upward, and that's going to pick up that rear wheel. Well, I'm not going to turn over in that scenario because I've actually got a, a pry that's holding me down. You know, I mean, uh, there's really no way the tractor can tip because of the pry. The, the, uh, you know, I'm pushing hard down on the tractor. For this grapple, I have to point it downward more than the other grapple that I've got. 
but when I do that, those teeth really help me. Just got a lot more power. Whoa. Look at that though, it's picking it right up. Look at that. Yeah, it was a weird feel here in the cab, but wow. I think we should pad the cab with pillows or something. Yeah, well, you should have wore your Michelin man suit. I'm gonna need to get a Michelin man suit. You know, when I rode in the tractors with Granddad and Uncle Tom and stuff, the ride is never this rough. Uh-oh, you think it's just me, huh? I think it's just you. Well, it could be, you know, I don't have the experience they've got. The other scenario is where the loader is up. It doesn't even have to be very high sometimes to get in the, this situation, but you, you've got the loader up and you bounce a little bit. Maybe you're on a slope. Sometimes you don't have to be on too much of a slope. The tractor with a loaded bucket or loaded grapple gets to bouncing and that rear end can get really lightweight. That scenario could end in disaster. And we do see, we see this all over the internet. We see a lot of people that have turned over their compact tractors and it, it is dangerous. Uh, they're narrow. Folks might be new with a tractor and they might not have built up this instinct to drop that loader to keep it close to the ground and if they feel too tipsy get it on the ground immediately. Uh, if they haven't built that instinct yet, I mean you can go over quickly. If when you feel that tipsy nature begin to happen a little bit, if you get scared and, and, and don't take corrective action, you're going to end up sideways. And at best, that's humiliating. At worst, well, we don't even want to talk about that. But I just want you to recognize the difference here. When you're in a loading situation, you're prying with or pulling with the grapple, um, you're in a much more controlled situation than when you're bouncing your loaders off the ground. It's just totally different scenarios. I think I'm gonna go in here and get me some brush. Oh, I missed it. I missed the big log that I wanted. I must admit, it is a bit rough in here. What do you need the big log for? Well, I thought I would go down to the brush pile with it. Oh, let her down, Tim. Your rear wheel's off the ground. There we go. We just don't have quite enough ballast. When we shot this episode, I hadn't yet received my heavier uh, rear ballast from Heavy Hitch. These are 100 pound weights on a Category 2 Heavy Hitch receiver. Heavy Hitch also makes a Category 1 bracket now that handles these dear 100 pound weights. I'll show you that in some other episode. But I didn't have that yet. What I had was eight 42 pound weights, just like these and 870 pound weights and it simply wasn't enough. All the required ballast information is actually listed in the loader manual on each loader. It says we need 3,197 pounds of three-point hitch ballast. Right there I think that should indicate how this tractor may not be quite large enough for that big loader. 3,197 pounds. There's no way I can get that on here. I have 16 100 pound weights. I have the 842 stuck into the receiver hitch down here. That along with the bracket is putting me right at 2,000 pounds. So there's simply no way I can get up to that amount for this option one. Option two is 2,756 pounds of three point hitch ballast plus 882 pounds of what they refer to as rear axle ballast. There's two different choices for rear axle ballast. Choice number one are wheel weights. Another choice is rim guard or other liquid ballast in the tires. So let's talk about rim guard for just a second. Rim guard is beet juice. Um, it's heavier than water. It won't freeze. If it happens to come out of your tires, it's not dangerous to anyone. It's actually the heaviest ballast that you can come up with that is safe for the environment. On the RimGuard website, RimGuardSolutions.com, they have a tire fill chart which will tell you how much weight that you can get in your tires. This chart is assuming a 75% fill number. A lot of places will actually fill them fuller than that, um, but 75% is a good place to start. I have 16928s. Each rear tire will hold 69 gallons or 738 pounds. 
Now that ballast with rim guard is going to be much cheaper than cast wheel weights. It's not going to cause any damage to your rims. It's out of sight, out of mind. So why don't I have that in this tractor? That's an interesting question. I don't have it in here because I need to transport this tractor on my trailer. I am right up against the 26,000 mark with my truck, trailer, tractor, loader, attachment. And that's very discouraging to me because this tractor would be dramatically different with another 1,600 pounds in the tires. It would allow me to meet that option two that I talked about here in the loader manual, and it would significantly improve the performance of this tractor overall. I highly recommend you get rim guard. I use it in my smaller tractors. Have been very happy with it over the years. I'm actually going to drive over this pile, see what it's like. You're going to hit mom. Nope. That's why I'm going to drive over the pile to avoid mom. Ah. So I'm going to have to level this down a little bit so Randall can plant over it. So see the brush pile I've already built? Yep. I guess I could call that good and put the bucket on. I don't know that I can get that little tree out, and I don't know that they can farm in there anyway. Are you trying to increase the amount of land that they can farm? Yeah, uh, this, this could be very valuable farmland here because it lays kind of low. It'll, it should retain moisture pretty well. It could be real, really good farmland, but it's, uh, you know, it used to be farmed. Yeah. But it's it's just got to where it, you know, the ditches and stuff have let it get out of control. Yeah, you've got that whole tree. Do the arms of the grapple operate separately? No. They operate cooperatively. Whichever one is uh, easiest operates. One ah. lever operates both. Is that a snake in there? It is. Snake? Where? I saw him in this pile slithering. I can't find him again now. Uh oh, there's a snake on the loose. I'm never getting out of this cab. Where are you, buddy? Here's Terry. Should we tell him? Hey, bud, there's a snake. How big of a snake was it? <laughs> Forget about the dumb snake. You just asked me to do the impossible. <laughs> you okay? You're doing good work. Is this what you got in mind? Yeah. How you doing for dirt supply? Well, I cleared all that to get to get to it, right? It's a lot of it down on the brush pile. It seems higher out there, so it seems fine to be taking some there. I think you're going funny deep. Yeah, it does look like I am. I, it's hard for me to know what I'm sure. doing. I don't know whether you could do anything up there with those other ones that Roger worked on or not. If we could get enough dirt up to them, we could get it so we could farm them on the back side of them. Yeah. Otherwise, they'll grow up brush because we can't get to them to mow them. Yeah, anyway, okay. I can try to work on that. I just put the bucket on. Yeah. I did all this with the grapple except for those last two buckets. Okay. 
We'll try to get this smoothed up a little bit before we go back there. Randall will plant right on over this just like it doesn't even exist. I'm impressed with the way you've been able to round it. I'm a little worried that when actual rain comes, it might compact and even more than your heavy tractor is able to and might not function, but that's just soil. Probably the biggest risk is that enough rain comes and it actually busts it's, it out. Yeah. If it ever goes over the top of it, it'll wash it all out. Well, the plan is to slope this here a little more gently. Okay. So, in theory, before I would have planted the end rows, we could have farmed to the top of the levee where you're standing instead of around it. So this is part of your new tile system, right? The is idea is to, to catch it here and run the water underground instead of washing a ditch on top of the ground. There. Right. And with our big rain, the water washed a ditch. It broke our levee down there. Okay. Around the end, it filled up and washed around the end of it. But what we're doing right now is not really improving that, but we're trying to make it so we can farm to the top of it. I see one other major advantage. It's got a care. Air conditioning. Air conditioning. I used to like to be the cameraman, but thinking now maybe the uh, tractor man might have an advantage. I'm thinking so. So why is the shifting for this so much harder than for the smaller tractors? It's a manual transmission instead of hydraulic transmission. Okay. You know, there's actual gears that have to move. Whereas with that, it's a lot easier to make that hydraulic pump go in the other direction with just those two pedals. But that means this one has a lot more power. It's no problem with the bucket empty. Oh, are you sure about that? It was pretty pretty questionable there, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, are you uh, holding on for gripping, your life? Gripping yes. the handle quite tightly? I might be. This episode was filmed on May the 18th, the same day as the plot planning episode from this same field. I hope it's been helpful to illustrate the importance of rear ballast. If you're using a tractor and loader, make sure you use a good combination of wheel weights, rim guard, and three-point hitch ballast to keep your tractor on solid footing. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor Time with Tim. device. Yeah.